There are three questions that require you to use protecting groups and then an assortment of other reactions from exam 2's material, it be it uh, carboxylic acid derivative reaction or oxidizing reducing agents or maybe even the Wittig reaction. So for number one, synthesize this structure from four carbons or less. And then for two and three, turn the reactant into its product. So this aldehyde and alcohol to an aldehyde and a carboxylic acid, and this structure that has a, a ketone and a carboxylic acid into a ketone and a carbon-carbon double bond. Now, pay attention to the direction of the arrows because I've intentionally flipped and flopped them to make sure that you are aware of where your reactants and products should be going. Okay, so give a, go ahead and pause the video if you want to give those a try. Otherwise, let's get started with number one. So, the first thing's first, you can't really synthesize a ring like this so you've got to break it apart into its chain form. So we saw before that if I want to form the ring, if I want the ring to be at the, the end of my arrow, I need H plus over that arrow. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to number my carbons and my oxygen that's part of the ring. One, two, three, four, and the oxygen is five. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase the bond between one and five, but keep everything else the same for now. Okay, so I erase the bond between one and five. The oxygen that was part of the ring becomes an OH, and the carbon that had the C double bond O becomes, or gets an OH on it as well. So I have a carboxylic acid and an OH somewhere in a chain together that through H plus come together to make this ring. And now I can start cutting up carbons apart because I have these two, into, these two groups separated. Now, how are we going to go cutting this apart? You have to remember whenever you see two oxygen-based species some distance apart on a carbon chain, and you need to cut that carbon chain, you have to protect one of those two, those two uh, oxygens, because the other one will get in the way as you do your synthesis. Now, what can we protect? Well, we can't protect carboxylic acid, and we can't protect OH either. Our acetal protecting group only works with C double bond O, where the carbonyl is either attached to only carbons, or hydrogen, so aldehydes or ketones. This is a carboxylic acid, so it wouldn't react. So we need to turn one of these two structures into a C double bond O. Now, the easier one to do that with is the OH, because we have a reaction that will turn OHs, or going, going backwards, turn OHs into C double bond O, but not touch the carboxylic acid. Let's erase this so I have more room. So what reaction will only turn a C double bond O into an OH, but not touch a carboxylic acid? That reaction would be NADH4. Because what I want is this. I want this. I want this OH to be a carbonyl over here. Well. And NADH4 is a reducing agent that's only strong enough to react with carbon, uh, ketones or aldehydes. It can't react with carboxylic acid. So carboxylic acid would say the same on both sides. And now I have the aldehyde, which I can protect. So how am I going to protect that? I am going to, since my arrow is ending at the C double bond O, the step before it is the step that removes the protecting group, because the protecting group is no longer here, which means H3O positive will be over the arrow. And that means, going backwards, what am I going to have? I'm going to have orgo beast on the carbon where this C double bond O was. So here's that carbon, and where there was once a C double bond O, I'm going to erase that double bond of that C double, the double bond in the O, and I'm going to draw the orgo beast instead. So I have this. Now this carbonyl is protected, so I can cut using the carboxylic acid. Now you have two options. You can either use the carboxylic acid to cut right away, or you can turn it into an OH first. If you were to turn it into an OH, what you would have to use is Jones reagent, because Jones is the only thing strong enough to turn an OH into a carboxylic acid. So if you went the Jones route, you would do this. Or go beast would remain unchanged. And if you didn't want to use Jones and you just want to cut right away, well, we approach this from the uh, we approach this by saying the car the oxygen with the C double bond O is A, the next carbon over is B. We're going to redraw structures A and B, or we're going to re redraw the whole structure. You're 
you're going to erase the bond between A and B. Structure A, where the OH is, you erase the hydrogen and make a double bond O. So this is CO2 now, and on the carbon that didn't have the oxygen but lost its bond, you put a lithium. So these two pieces together with step two H plus would make this. And if you went the OH route, well, it's still the same thing as what we did here. We're gonna label the carbon with the OH A, the carbon next door, a single bond away, B. We draw everything on this side exactly the same starting out. OH, one, two, orgo beast. And now I'm going to erase the bond between A and B. The carbon with the OH becomes C double bond O. And the carbon that lost the bond that was once connected to this carbon gets the lithium. So I have this plus this with step two H plus. I'm just gonna write this a little further apart. So C double bond O, this has two hydrogens on it. Or you could use carbon dioxide, which would look like, I can write it out like this, CO2 plus this come together to make uh, that. So now this and this are exactly the same thing. So I'm going to just, I'm going to redraw this over here and just work off of this now because while well, these two routes, these two routes end up converging at the same thing regardless of which way you choose. So now I need to cut this thing apart. Well, the first thing I want to do is get rid of that lithium because lithium causes nothing but trouble when we have protect, if we want to remove protecting groups. So I'm going to turn that lithium back into a bromine by putting lithium over the arrow. And now I have one, two, three, four, five, and then orgo beast. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need four carbons or less, so I'm not done yet. But there's a bromine over here. Okay? Now we have a reaction that can turn bromine into an OH, which we can use to cut. And that reaction is either PBR3 or HBR. I'm going to use PBR3. And so now I have an OH where that bromine was. Two, three, four, five, orgo beast, like that, and this is an OH. Now I'm going to erase this stuff over here so I have more room. So now I have an OH again, I can cut. I'm going to cut the side over here so I have cut off more carbons, but it doesn't really matter because you have four or less once you're finished anyway. So. Let's say I label this carbon A, and I have two Bs to choose from. This one on the right, and this one on the left. I'm gonna choose the one on the, on, uh, I'm gonna choose this one to cut with, so I'm gonna redraw everything the same again. Here's my OH, my carbon, and my orgo beast. I'm erasing the bond that I decided to cut. The carbon with the OH gets C double bond O. I erase the hydrogen and draw a double bond. And the carbon that was connected that didn't have the OH gets the lithium. Then over the arrow, I just have to write step two, H plus. And now this is one, two, three, four. This is one, two, three. They're both four carbons less, so I'm done, but I'm gonna take this one extra step just to emphasize a point. If I wanted to remove the protecting group, let's say that if the protecting group was on, it was more than four carbons, well, I can't just remove the protecting group here because remember, Lithium can't be on the same structure, or can't be within the same structure that contains either carbon, oxygen, double bonds, or OHs. Bad things happen and the reaction won't go the way you want. So what you have to do first is turn that lithium back into a bromine. So lithium over the arrow turns that lithium into a bromine. And now you are free to deprotect. Now remember, your arrow is pointing to the protecting group, which means this arrow is putting the protecting group on. That means over the arrow, you need your diol and your H plus. And what you go back to is on this carbon that has the two single bonded oxygens, you erase all of orgo beast off of that, and you just draw, draw a carbon oxygen double bond. So here's, here's carbon one, carbon two. So here's the bromine attached to carbon one. Carbon one is attached to carbon two, and carbon two will have a C double bond O on it. And so, well, you don't have to do this because it's four carbons or less, I'm just doing it to emphasize the point of what you have to do if you ever want to remove the protecting group from a structure that has lithium. Turn the lithium into bromine first, always, because lithium just causes too many problems. Um,
So for number two, we have to turn this structure with an aldehyde and an alcohol into a structure with an aldehyde and a, carbo excuse me, a carboxylic acid. So aside from this being a video on using protecting groups, why do we know we need to use a protecting group? Well, for two reasons. One, we see that this aldehyde stayed the same between both structures. That's probably one good hint. The other thing is, well, let's think about how do we make a carboxylic acid from an OH in the first place? We have to use Jones reagent, the H2CrO4 reaction. But if I were to just up and use H2CrO4 from the start, H2CrO4, yes, this OH would become a carboxylic acid, but so would the aldehyde, because Jones reagent is in particular, it will react with everything it can and oxidize everything it can so long as there's room to make those extra bonds. So we can't just use Jones. We have to do something else. And what we have to do is add that protecting group. So your first step should be adding the protecting group. Now notice the direction of your arrow. You're going from something that doesn't have the protecting group to something that does, which means the diol should be over your arrow. So you put your earmuffs and your H plus, and now all you're going to do is on the carbon that has the C double bond O, you're going to erase that C double bond O, so I'll draw it out the same to start out. You're going to erase that C double bond O, and on that carbon, you're going to draw orgo B. So two single bonds to an oxygen, and then the hat. Now I'm safe, uh, now it's safe to freely oxidize this OH with Jones to a carboxylic acid, because this carbonyl is temporarily blocked by orgo Bs. So your next step should be Jones reagent. If you write Jones or if you write, write H2CrO4, I think we'll treat it the same way. Um, because it, it is the same thing for our purposes. So our, our protecting group is still on. But now that carbon with the OH has a carboxylic acid instead. So this carbon right here is this carbon right here. And then I have one, two, three, one, two, three. Now all I have to do to get the aldehyde back is remove the protecting group. And the way you remove the protecting group, if, you're start, if your arrow is starting from orgo beast and going to the carbonyl, you need H3O positive over that arrow. And so that's how you would do number two. Protect, oxidize, and then deprotect. So number three is a little more challenging than the other problems, but let's try and reason out what we need to do. So I'm trying to turn this structure into this structure, where I have a ketone on both, but I turn somehow a carboxylic acid into a carbon-carbon double bond. So let's start by pointing out what's the same. The five member ring is the same, the carbon with the double bond O is the same, and now on this carbon I have the carbon of the ring connected to a carbon with a C double bond O, OH. On this case, the same carbon is most likely this, but it's attached to a carbon that's on a carbon-carbon double bond. So these two carbons to the left, of, or to the right of this dotted line must be added somewhere in the reaction. Now, one thing that we can say based on what we were doing with the last problem is, if this carbonyl stayed the same throughout the entire reaction, we probably had to protect it. Because what I'm going to emphasize over and over again is if you ever see a structure that has two oxygen-based species, be it carboxylic acid and OH, or carbonyl and OH, or carboxylic acid and carbonyl, you want to protect one of those so the other doesn't get in the, in the way of any other reactions you're doing. So since this carbonyl wants to stay the same between both reaction, uh, through the whole reaction, I'd say it's probably a good bet to protect it. Now, I can do H plus and put my protecting group on because I'm going from something that's starting without the protecting group and going to something with it. So I do H plus and my earmuffs. Now, why doesn't this protecting group protect the carboxylic acid instead? Because remember, the earmuffs will only protect ketones, so carbonyls where there are only carbons attached to the carbon, uh, the carbon of the double bond, and aldehydes where it's carbons or hydrogen. Okay, but that's a carboxylic acid is neither a ketone nor an aldehyde. It has an OH group on it. And so you know it will never be protected by the protecting group. This is the only thing that could get protected. So what you can do is, with, with confidence, put your orgo beast on that top, top carbonyl without worrying about this changing anything. So here's the carbon that had the C double bond O. I erase this, the double bond O and I draw the orgo beast on top. So now this carbonyl is blocked and I don't have to worry about it reacting with whatever else I do in the reaction. Now, I have to stop for a second and think, this is weird. I'm turning a carboxylic acid into a carbon-carbon double bond. How do I do that? Because there's no direct way, obviously, but this just, it, it looks weird. Well, we already said that these two carbons are most likely the same. The one on the ring and the one connecting to the C double bond O. 
Now think about something in regards to this double bond. What kind of double bond that is this in terms of E and Z? Your largest group on this side of the double bond is going this way. Your largest group on this side of the double bond is going this way. They're on the same side. They are, this is a Z double bond. Hey, wait, we know a reaction that makes Z double bonds. And they come from something that involves a carbon-oxygen double bond, the Wittig reaction. If we were to do the Wittig reaction here, well, I could break this double bond going backwards and put a double bond O in its place. And we know a way of turning double bond O into carboxylic acid. So that's probably what we have to do. So let's say I'm going forward. I need to turn this carboxylic acid into a carbon-oxygen double bond, just an aldehyde. So is there a direct way of going forward turning that carboxylic acid into an aldehyde like this? Well, unfortunately there isn't, so we're going to need to take two steps to get it there. The first thing we have to do is turn that carbon-oxygen double bond into a carbon-oxygen single bond, an OH. How do we do that? Well, the only thing strong enough to reduce carboxylic acid is LiAlH4. Now I can oxidize that OH to just an aldehyde, a C double bond O, by using the weak oxidizer PCC. This isn't strong enough to turn it into a carboxylic acid like Jones is, so it will stop at the C double bond O. And so I still have my orgo beast. But now this is a C double bond O. And this can react with the Wittig reagent. So over my arrow, now I need to do the Wittig reaction. Now, how many carbons should be double bonded to that PPH3? So I know the PPH3 will be the same, but what should be on this double bond? Well, we already said these two carbons, let's say one and two, were added in the reaction because these two carbons were there from the start, which means on this double bond, I need to have one, two carbons, one and two. And if I do that, when this reaction happens, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this structure exactly the same. So I have my five-membered ring that I started with. My orgo beast protecting group, he's still not letting anything happen to this carbon. I have this bond going out like here, and I have the double bond O. Now what you're going to do is you're just going to erase the double bond O and attach whatever carbons are double bonded to the phosphorus. So I have carbons one and two, so I'm just going to attach carbons one and two to that double bond and make sure that it is a Z double bond. And now I have that double bond where it belongs. So I only have one step left to do. I need to remove the protecting group. So my last step is just going to be H3O plus to remove the protecting group. And there is number three synthesis.